for teachers to reinforce critical thinking skills, first what teachers have to do, and I'm going to go back to the guidelines that Skinner mentioned, um, the first thing they have to do is be clear about what is being taught. Critical thinking is not a behavior. Critical thinking is a name for a complex set of verbal behaviors or verbal repertoire that someone has. So if you want to teach what we call critical thinking, you have to define what it is you mean by that. Um, and so once you've done an analysis of the kinds of verbal responses to, to verbal stimuli that, that define critical thinking, um, that's being clear about what is being taught. Um, it, it, I, I would not blame a teacher at all if I told the teacher to, to teach critical thinking skills to students and that teacher failed. I wouldn't blame them because they don't know what critical thinking skills are. So what I would, what I would feel obligated to provide them would be um, a list or a set of all of the behaviors that I could possibly think of that would constitute critical thinking. And again, if we go back to the definition of, of, of learning as relatively permanent changes in environment behavior relations, we can't just talk about behavior in a vacuum. So critical thinking doesn't occur in a vacuum. It must occur to a set of questions or a set of problems posed to, to, to the kid. So the first thing is be clear about what, you're be, about what is being taught. You don't teach critical thinking. You teach verbal responses to particular verbal questions or verbal problems. Um, and you must have examples and non-examples so that the child learns which, which are the examples of of skills we call critical thinking, which are the non-examples of skills we call, that we don't call critical thinking. Um, and then you have to, uh, once, once you've been clear about what you're, what, you're gonna, what you're gonna teach, then you have to teach first things first. So you have to figure out where is the, where is the kid with respect to these skills. Um, and once you've identified where the kid is at, then of course you can design a program. Um, and it could be on a computer or it could be a program that's delivered by a teacher. Um, by program, I don't mean computer program. I just, I mean, when, when Skinner talks about programming the subject matter, what he means is breaking it down into its component parts and then presenting them sequentially. Okay, so that's what we mean by a program. Um, so then once you've uh, met the first two or three guidelines, then you program the subject matter and you make sure, as you do with any skill, that when the kid masters one step, that there's reinforcement for that step. And the, the reinforcement should be immediate and it should, and it should be uh, defined as reinforcement. That means it increases the probability that that will occur again the next time. Um, and, and so by doing that, you can teach critical thinking skills, I think, much more efficiently and much more successfully than most people uh, who claim to teach critical thinking do so nowadays.